I'm getting ready to start the rough parabolization on this 20 inch f4.5 quartz mirror and to do that I'll start with a 7 inch and an 8 inch pitch lap. These are both starred a little bit or scalloped around the edges and I've used these on a previous mirror so the first step is to do a cold press to get these two pitch laps to conform to the shape of this particular mirror. This is a 12 inch lap and I'll use this for smoothing. The little 7 and the 8 are used to actually uh, dig out most of the depth on the curve and then I use this 12 inch lap to smooth things out. So the first thing I do is to take a, just a straight razor blade and put some microfaceting in the tool. And I do this just by making uh, scratches on the surface. And I like to put one or two or three in every facet. And you can even just draw them along the surface like this. You can definitely feel the difference when you microfacet a lap like this. It has a much nicer texture and feel on the surface of the mirror. Next step is to take just a plain old brass brush and to strongly, vigorously brush the surface. Now the brushing helps to release the chips out of where I scratched and it's a, yet another layer of microfaceting. And then I just take a rinse. And this pitch lap is now ready to go. I'm basically finishing up the rough polishing here. The mirror is fully polished out, but I needed to improve the edge a little bit. So now I'm going back with no weight on the pitch lap and running at only about 20 RPMs. This will have the effect of cleaning up that edge and getting rid of some of the uh, zoning on the mirror. Uh, when I put this on the test stand and took a look at it, I have a hill here in the center that's quite small. It's only about a 6 inch diameter or a little more than that. And so the first thing I want to do is to work down that central hill. And to do that I'm going to use this little 4 and 1 quarter inch pitch lap. Let me zoom in on that a little bit here. Now to use this little four and a quarter inch pitch lap, I'm going to use several different strokes that I'll demonstrate. Now when I do corrections like this for figuring, I like to use a variety of strokes to accomplish uh, one thing. And by using a variety of different strokes all moving toward that target, you tend to leave a little smoother surface and to broaden the action out a little bit so that you don't create zones. Now the most common stroke to use to reduce the center hill is just a little W stroke. The W stroke looks like this. I go from the left to the right and back and forth. So I'm making W's on the surface. Now you don't put much pressure on a little pitch lap like this. Uh, I'm only putting maybe a pound or a pound and a half of pressure on it as I W across the surface. Now obviously you adjust the size of the W to affect whatever part of the mirror that you want to affect. For example, I could uh, this one I've been doing now is fairly narrow. I'm going back and forth about two inches or so. If I wanted to affect a larger area of the mirror, I'd just make a larger W. Now one thing that's important as you're doing these strokes, you want to rotate the tool in your hands. Uh, you can see it has a number four and a quarter on there. I don't want to make all my strokes with that four and the quarter staying in that same direction like that. So every so often I'll let go of it and let it rotate a little or else I'll actually spin it in my hands so that a different angle is going. Now I'll do this W stroke here a little bit. You watch where the four and a quarter ends up. You can see each time I complete one of the W strokes left and right the pitch lap rotates a little in my hand. There it's coming back around. It's almost made a full revolution now. <laughs> in general, you always do that with a pitch lap when you're doing polishing. You want to continually use a different diameter of the pitch lap. And by having this on a turntable, I'm constantly working on a different diameter of the mirror. So I want to present every diameter of the pitch lap to every diameter of the mirror 
over time, but I want to do it in kind of a, a, a random way. So uh, I'm not trying to make any exact angle change here. I'm not trying to always make it 45 degrees. Whatever it comes out as, I just let go for a minute or twist it a little bit. And it's not important that it be exactly the same. It's just important that it rotates in your hand. Now another stroke that I use to help deepen this little center zone is just a long, what I call a long straight stroke, although in this case it's not very long. I'm going to offset the, the pitch lap a little bit from center, about a half an inch or three quarters of an inch, and then just take a straight stroke and then rotate the lap in my hand as I go. <clears throat> now that is concentrating the work on the center of the mirror and the stroke length lengthens out the area that is affected. Now this sort of stroke has a lot of uh, ability to fine-tune it. For example, I can alter how far away from the center I vary the stroke. So I might have it with a half inch overhang or offset, half inch offset, or I might go all the way out here for a two inch offset. <laughs> and doing any of those strokes changes where the work on the stroke is actually put into the mirror. If you have something like a, the central here, hill is pretty high, I'm going to need maybe uh, 15 or 20 minutes of work to pare it down. Uh, another way to spread out the work is to do what I call a V stroke. Uh, for example, I'll do that same stroke where I go one, two, three, and then the fourth stroke I go to the right. So it's like one, two, three, stroke to the right. One, two, three, one to the right. And that kind of a V stroke distributes the work a little bit wider and in a little different pattern. Now I'll do that one, two, three stroke, one, two, three to the right, one, two, three to the right. <laughs> and then I'll do that for a little while and then I'll alter it. Maybe I'll do one, two to the right, one, two to the right, one, two to the right. And by doing that, if I take two strokes and go to the right, I'm getting less action in the center, more action on the outside than if I do three up the center and one to the right. So by doing one right, one right, or one, two, right, one, two, right, or one, two, three, right, you can alter what percentage of your work goes to the center and what percentage goes to the outside. Now the same way, I can adjust the length of the stroke. If I take a short little stroke here, then obviously the action isn't getting away any farther from the center than the edge of that stroke. But I can lengthen that stroke out and that puts some action out there several inches, four or five inches away from the center of the mirror. Now the same way back in the W stroke, I also do a little variation there. I might do a six stroke W where I go one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's a full cycle left and right. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll do that for a minute or two and then I'll make it a, an eight stroke cycle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so I can vary the stroke like that. And with the W stroke, it's also good to put in odd numbered strokes. I might make it a seven where I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The nice thing about going to an odd number of strokes is that your strokes on the way back hit in a different place than the strokes on the way out. So left and right you get a little variance in the strokes. Now the whole point of all this variation is to not do the same thing over and over on the mirror but to have all of those strokes working towards your general goal of correcting the, mirror, the middle of the mirror and deepening the center.